Well, we're here on the side of Territorial Highway, just a couple miles outside of Lorraine, where they do still have the road blocked off. I want to show you just how close the fire got. It came right up to this fence here. And then if you walk right over here, you can see that it's just yards from this home. We're going to walk over here also, so you can see now there are a couple of businesses just adjacent this one down to earth behind me. ODF says that it is an important reminder. You can see how tall the grass is here to think about defensible space and what this could mean for your home. He walked across the street to this neighbor's house right here asking if anyone had seen her. Yeah, General Manager Alan Benavidez is in the hot seat right now about to get his haircut. This is a copy of that settlement between the University of Oregon and the alleged victim in that rape case. Right now, Pilot Bailey is using this wheel to control the elevator of the blimp. Check this out. As I step into the snow here, it breaks through. It's got that layer of ice. A cruise remain here on scene tonight, putting out some hot spots after a fire ripped through this iconic bowling alley. It's hard, um, but I, I can't look away. You know, I, I don't feel like I can go home. Perhaps that's because it was a second home. We've slept here. We've cleaned the place. We've, you know, we've hung out here all the time for years and years. It's like an icon. As flames ripped through Southtown Lanes Wednesday evening, employee of 10 years, Al Ullman, watched silently. Pretty broken up. It's, I don't, we all, we don't know what we're going to do. I don't know. It's a little surreal. Um, I'm trying not to cry. Everybody here is just hoping we wake up and it's still there. But the flames and smoke are evidence of the damage already done to this iconic building dating back to the 1950s, a place employee Ashley Alexander describes as inclusive. We have people from small families to the little street punk kids to uh, federal judges who come in here every day. It was a community for everybody. We. Uh, loved everybody. If you loved bowling, we loved you. Years of community history gone in just a few short minutes as the people who worked here try to figure out what to do next and make sense of the devastation. SWAT officers armed and ready as a heavy police presence shut down 42nd Place and Daisy Street in Springfield. There's been a lot of stuff that's happened in this neighborhood over the years and nothing to this extent. Neighbors on edge. Friends and family huddling close. We're learning the man behind the ordeal, 46-year-old Stephen Clanton, broke into this home where friends say he and his ex-wife live, carrying a gas can, and then poured gasoline inside the house and refused to come out. A judge uh, issued a restraining order that told him that he was not allowed to be at this residence. A restraining order, friends say, served just days before the incident. He was very irate um, at her. She was here for about two hours. Um, there was some arguing and some things said, and he basically told her she needed to leave the house. Vicki Kane says Clanton is an alcoholic. We did speak to him earlier today, and he sounded like, you know, he really wanted to go into rehab, but I believe, like I said, that those plans didn't work out well, and that's why he chose this. Driven away in this patrol car, a peaceful ending to the situation as Clanton faces several charges, including attempted arson of the home he once shared. Yeah, I don't recognize that guy. Looks like a little boy. In a box he tucked away for years. There's my dad and me and my mom leaving. Uh, on my way to Vietnam. A collection of pictures from a time when Vietnam veteran Doug Heathman was a young man. In that box, an airline ticket, the only one he's kept in nearly 50 years. I always thought, well, I should go, you know, try and actually thank him in person or somehow. Written in red ink. And there's the ticket he gave me. July 1969. A date Heathman remembers vividly. He slid the ticket across. I put you in the forward cabin, and I didn't 
I don't know, didn't think anything about it. Recently back from serving a year in Vietnam and in full uniform, the 19-year-old bought a ticket home to Iowa after visiting some friends in Eugene. It wasn't until Heathman got on the plane that he realized what the ticket agent did for him that day. The pilot attendant came and said, want to see my ticket? And I said, showed it to her. He said, well, you're supposed to be in the first class. So he upgraded me to first class, and I had uh, neglected to uh, thank him, so I came back to try and find him. Determined to thank the man behind the first class ticket, Heathman wrote a letter to United Airlines and is actively working with them to track down the employee. We're told this may be the employee's ID number, a first clue in hopefully finding the man who showed his respect for Heathman's service. A camera captures a man walking through the grass in the backyard. Later that night, he's back, shown here blatantly walking away from the flashes of flames, ones that quickly grew and woke up neighbors. I went down the alley to see just how involved the house was. We were shocked. And shock quickly turned to fear for Coburg resident Vicki Getchell. Looking up and seeing all the dried trees, I was thinking if that thing gets fully engulfed, if the fire is going to spread and this whole block could go up. Fire officials say because the Matthew house dates back to the early 1900s, it doesn't have fire blocking and it could have gone up quickly. Now police asking for the community's help in searching for this man who they believe is behind it. And questions swirling about a motive because plans were in the works to turn this house into a marijuana dispensary. The Matthew house is an historic home and we'd love to see a business go in, but I don't think this is the right kind of business for that. Being 12 weeks pregnant and expecting our first child, I mean, our kid's going to ride a bicycle down the street and two feet away there's going to be a car parked and they're going to be buying their pot. Controversy surrounding what business will go in this historic house. So much that neighbors are fighting the city to appeal a potential marijuana dispensary. By putting in a pot dispensary into Coburg in general, it kind of takes away from the town because the town, I mean, you don't have very many little towns left. A fire sparking conversation about what's important to the town, but not understanding one person's extreme behavior to torch the building. I understand the person is frustrated with city council, but to start a fire and have arson is not the answer. The engine revs as the propellers spin, and then this 192 foot blimp is off into the Eugene sky. For pilot William Bayless, it's a complicated game of mechanics in flying this iconic airship. I use the rudder pedals on the ground here, similar to an airplane or a helicopter. You have strong legs to be a blimp pilot, so you're just moving those control surfaces left and right. It's all based on pressure, maintaining a certain amount of helium and air inside this envelope. If it was cloudy right now and say the clouds covered up the sun, the ship gets heavier. So that happens while we're flying as well. So it's it's extremely variable, so we're thinking about that. There's a lot of math and science, you know, mental computations. Right now, Pilot Bayless is using this wheel to control the elevator of the blimp. A quite a science that goes into takeoff and keeping the blimp in the air, but pilots say that the real reward is the view. I've flown airplanes up in this area of the country. It's my first time flying airships, and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty cool. You see the mountains in L.A. if the smog's clear that day, but, um, out here you can see, I saw those snow-capped mountains out to the east. They were beautiful. The rivers, we were following them yesterday. Breathtaking views of the Eugene skyline Friday and several other incredible flights like these shots from San Francisco to Arcata. Windows into the world below. But sometimes their helium friend apparently has a mind of her own. You don't get cocky ever flying this. You know, it's, you don't, she'll, she'll tell you. She'll, she, she can, you know, she, it's almost like she feels it. It's like, uh, no, no. Uh, the blimp's going to do this, and you know it's it's always changing, so you always have to be on your toes flying it. And just as quickly as she takes off, in for a landing. Until the next time, the Goodyear blimp floats the skies over another part of the country. In Eugene, Sarah Hurwitz, KEZI 9 News.